Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to show you how the if change template tag works in Django. So the if change template tag allows you to have loops inside of your template. And anytime a particular value that the tag is checking changes, you can do something within that block. So it's kind of like an if statement, but it's checking a specific thing. It's checking the value of a variable. So this is used inside of a loop. So what I'll do is I'll loop over some values here in my template. So let's say for uh, value in values. So I haven't created the values list yet, but I'll have a loop looping over those values. So let me go ahead and create the values here. So let's say values are uh, Python, Ruby, Java and JavaScript. So I have those four values and as you can see, they're all the same. So if change won't come into effect quite yet, but this is just to get things set up. So values, uh, this should be string values is going to be values and I'll pass this to the render function. So what I'll simply do is I'll put like H1 headers around the value just so we can see it working. And it crashed. So I messed up something. I forgot the equal sign. Okay, so server's running again. And I see the four values that I put here. So Python, Ruby, Java, and JavaScript. So Let's say I wanted to do something like have a line break underneath each um, value whenever it changes. So here's what the regular line break looks like. So just a horizontal line break, just like that. But instead of having it under each value, I want to have it under each value only if that value changes. So now what I need to do is put some in here. And ordering is assumed in this because it only compares the value to the last iteration of the loop when you're using if change. So let me add Java again, and then I'll add JavaScript here. So we have Python three times, Ruby once, Java twice, and JavaScript twice. So right now I have a line break under each one, but I want to change it so I only have a line break under the language when it changes. So Python line break, Ruby, line break, Java twice, line break, and then JavaScript, line break. I know it's a simple example, but it illustrates what if change does. So if I bring in the if change, if I can spell it, if change template tag, I'm just gonna put that around the horizontal line break. So end if changed. And what this does is it's going to check the value that is being evaluated in the loop, which happens to be called value. So whatever the uh, iteration variable is, in this case value, it's going to compare that value that's in the current iteration of the loop with the last one. And if it's different, that's when it goes into this block. So now if I run this, we see it only appears under Python. So what's going on? Why? Why does it only appear when Python changes for the first time, but it doesn't for anything else in the loop? Well, that's because I can specify it a little more directly. So if change value, now we see the value appears, uh, we see four line breaks appear uh, and we have four different things that I want to compare to, but still the line break doesn't appear in the right place. So what's happening is if we think about this logically for value in value. So for the first value evaluation in the loop, we have Python, which we have here. And then we say if the value has changed since the last iteration add a horizontal break. And because there was no last iteration of the value of the loop, it defaults to true. So we get that line break. So then it does it again and we have Python again. 
And what happens is the value is the same because we had Python the last time. So this doesn't get executed and a line break doesn't happen. So what I want is the line break to actually happen after the last Python, not after the first one. So to do that, I can move it above where I put the value instead of below. So like this. And then when I run it, now we see the line breaks are appearing in the right spot. So we have the horizontal line break to begin with. We have a line break after all the three Pythons, after Ruby, and after Java. And then there's nothing after JavaScript. If I wanted to have something after JavaScript, then I would put a line break after the loop has finished and it appears here. So. In this example, it is a little silly to have the line break above, but when you're doing something like creating a table, this becomes really important because this is where all of the table header would be and the opening table tag, and then these are like the table rows, and then this kind of represents where the table would close, and then you would open it again for the next value. So this is where I was using it the other day. That's why I came up with the idea of the video. But the idea is you you basically have a beginning and an end to a section and then all the values go in between that section and that's where if change can work for you. So if you had a dictionary of values, instead of using uh, if change value, because I only have one value here, you would use like value dot something to make it a little more direct. So let me go ahead and create a simple example like that. So dictionary values, let's say name and language. So Python. And Anthony. OK, so that's one. And I'll just do a couple because it's a little harder to create. dictionaries okay so just put some names in here and then programming languages um, Okay, so instead of passing values, I'll pass this list of dictionaries. And now I just need to be more specific about what I want to display. So value.name, I can display that. And then let me add also value.language. So if I don't change what's in the if changed tag here, we see it ends up under each one because it always changes. But if I am a little more specific, like name, then the breaks go in the right place. So Anthony has its own section, Ashley has her own section, and then Brian has a section as well. So regardless of what type you're using, there's a way to kind of reference the value that you're interested in being changed. You'll see that if it's language, then it really doesn't make that much sense because the language always changes. But of course, you could have it to where, let's say, the first language that Ashley has is Ruby instead of Python. So if I run this again, then Anthony and Ashley get grouped together because of Ruby. So just keep in mind that anytime you're using this, you'll probably have to have some kind of ordering on the list that you're passing to the tag so it makes sense because if the results are in a random order then if change doesn't make any sense you want to group the results by something that you want to section them off by in the code so name could be one type could be another it just depends on your use case but just keep in mind that you want to have some ordering on them before you actually uh, use if change otherwise it won't work that well so I know it's a simple video but that's all I want to show you today. If you have any questions about this, you can leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.